Or swim or a paddle, Lizzie. You've got to be joking. <laughs> Wild horses wouldn't drag me in there. It'll be freezing. I know. Frankie can warm you up later. Oh, I'll drink to that. <laughs> you, uh, you sure I can't tempt you, Lizzie? No way. Hey, <laughs> we'll hold the fort. Do you know something, man? I must be the luckiest man in the whole world. Really? Hmm. I haven't got everything I've ever wanted right in front of me. Well, this is really because everybody's now looking at us thinking we're just having a party. Well, nearly. <sighs> help! Somebody help! Help! What's going on? Oh, goodness, she's drowned. I know. Carolyn. What's happened to her? She jumped in. I, I think she's dead. She's got clothes on. Mind her neck. Be careful of her neck. Oh, God. Oh. That's a bad bang to her head. She's going to need an x ray. We need to support her neck. She might have damaged her spine. Oh. Is she going to be all right? She could have drowned. What were you doing? Frankie, find something we can use for a stretcher. We need to get her up top. Right. She doesn't deserve this. Poor Caroline. No, she doesn't. Caroline? Caroline, wake up. Wake up. There, that's it. You're all right. Where am I? The Royal. I, you had a nasty bump on your head. You knocked yourself out. You were lucky Dr Goodwin was there. Oh, I don't remember that. <coughs> I can't... I can't move my legs. What's happening? Merton, I'd have caught you. Staff appraisals, reports on nursing duties, assessments, day-to-day -day records. I am rather busy, Mr Harper. I know. That's precisely why I've taken the liberty of instructing the employment agency to send us an assistant, Merton, Merton. On a temporary basis, you understand. She's due to arrive tomorrow morning. I should have been consulted. Are you trying to undermine me, Mr Harper? Certainly not. I'm trying to ensure the smooth running of this hospital, that's all. And I must say, I object to the inference that I might have ulterior motives in this matter. Look, all I was saying was that I don't think it's my job to discipline the children. I mean, what are they going to think if I'm the only one that ever comes down hard on them? Well, we're a family now. We understand that. Gordon, half an hour it took me to clean that carpet. And look, I don't care about the carpet. I just think that you ought to do your bit. <laughs> I'm your wife, you know? I'm not their mother. Just one look. That's all it took a year. Just one look. That's all it took a year. Just one look. You know what we need? A good night out. I'm still recovering from last night. So recover this evening and we'll go out tomorrow. Young, free and single, that's the best way to be, isn't it, Alan? Well... I might see me getting hitched Not for a long time. Too much fun to be had. <laughs> and you are... Nurse Beaumont. Who are you? Assistant Matron Parker. Beaumont. Assistant Matron working here. I'll handle this, thank you. I'm Matron, Mrs Parker. At uh, Miss. Indeed. Come to my office. A brief chat before you start. Excellent. I see there's plenty to do. Oh, 
This is Mr. Harris. Uh, it hit his head on a branch out running. He's in training. Ah, Mr. Brickhouse Harris. Then there's Neville to his friends. I thought you would have retired long ago. Ah, one last fight, Doctor. I don't know if that'll do me. Mm. Right, let's have a look at you, shall we? Yeah. Hmm. Doesn't look too bad, but you never can tell with head injuries. As you well know. Did you lose consciousness? Oh, a couple of seconds, maybe. No big deal. Have a look at you. Uh -huh. hmm. Well, I think we'd better keep you in overnight. Oh, I can't do that. I've got, I've got a job on. Well, I'm sure your boss will understand. Mr Harper kindly gave me a copy of your reference from the agency. Meticulous, punctual, disciplined, dedicated. I must say, I recommend you very highly. Well, I'm a keen worker, and I have been doing this job for 20 years. Lead by example is what I've always believed. Very good. Thank you, ma'am. Mrs. Howell, you shouldn't be exerting yourself. No. Look, I really think you should go into hospital now. Look, I was born at home. There was no problem then. I know, but you know this time it's different. Look, I want you to go into hospital before you go into labour. Do you promise me? Everything OK? Everything is fine. Can you feel that? Yes. Ow! Sorry. Still, the good news is you've got normal sensation in your legs. I don't understand. What's wrong with me? That's what we're trying to find out, Carolyn. Normal sensation. Her reflexes were fine. X-rays show no abnormality in the spine or skull, so there's no physical damage. Carolyn, what can you recall about last night? I remember getting ready to go out. I don't know what happened after that. Martin. Hey, baby. Oh, baby, I'm sorry. Well, I don't understand why she can't move her legs. I better get Mr. Rose to take a look. I won't take up too much of your time. Due to an increase of red tape swamping my desk, I've been requested to bring in Miss Parker. Temporarily. She will take over the day-to-day -day running of the hospital while I get the paperwork in order. I'm pleased to say that Assistant Matron Parker has a wealth of experience which she's kindly going to share with us. Miss Parker. Good morning. Good morning. I have met one or two of you already. But luckily, I don't go on first impressions. Ah, Major. Not now, Mr Harper. I must get on. I like to make an immediate impact, so I thought I'd best start by clarifying a few points of conduct. Is that her, then? It is. All nurses are on duty from breakfast and may not return to their rooms without permission of sister. All nurses must avoid loud talking in the corridor and other parts of the hospital. That includes reception. Nurses must avoid gossip and familiarity with subordinates or patients. Nurses may only run in the case of fire and or hemorrhage. Thank you. Dismiss. She's incredible. You can say that again. Well done, Mrs Parker. She's a miss, I believe. Miss? It's like she's completely blanked the accident out. Can you think why she'd do that? I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Reflexes normal, sensations normal. I'd say it's a reaction to the trauma. Doesn't appear to be any spinal damage, so I'm pretty sure you'll make a full recovery. Dr Goodwin. So what do you think? Poor girl's obviously got herself into a bit of a tears. Physically, she's as healthy as you or I. It's all up here. Hysterical paralysis. 
She's got distress and the old receptors have gone a bit haywire. It can manifest itself in different ways, of course. Blindness, even your chapel went dumb for two weeks. In this case, it's affected her legs. Well, that would tie in with the memory loss. All you have to do is uncover what's wrong with her head. What have you done to yourself this time? Oh, it's only my head. You're too old for the fight game, Neville. One day it will be serious. But well, we need the money, you know that. Don't be so stubborn. All I know is I'd rather go without than see you get really hurt. Hey, you're gonna love this. What? Follow me. Look there. Break out, Harris. What's up with him? Hope it's nothing serious. He's gonna fight tomorrow night, you know. <gasps> Hello, Matron. Um, we've just come to check that bed over there. There's a dodgy grommet. Sprocket fatigue. Speak English. Listen, uh, hope you don't mind. We've come over to see how you are. We're big fans of yours. Very big fans. Oh, that's nice of you to say so, lads. Uh, are you going to be all right for the fight tomorrow? Oh, yeah. The doctor says I'll be right as rain by then. Oh, that's a relief thing. Uh, if there's anything that you need, you call us. Well, there is one thing. <laughs> Parker, I believe. Yes. Mr. Harper, you hospital administrator. Uh, I run a tight ship here, but we're a happy crew, so welcome aboard to continue the nautical analogy. Thank you, Mr. Harper. I must say it's a pleasure to meet the man at the helm. I like to get to know new members of staff, so uh, come and have a chat if you get a moment. My uh, door's always open. I'm just about to take a break, actually. If you'd care to join me. That'd be lovely. Could you see her, perhaps? Perfect. Oh, just uh, give me a moment to freshen up. Nature didn't give you such a beautiful face, but baby, hey. I uh, want to apologise for this morning. You were right. I should have done a bit with the kids. That's all right. Hmm. Our first quarrel. Oh, no, Tiff. We're just getting used to being married, that's all. Well, you were right. You're not the mother of my children. Although that is something that we could rectify. I'm not with you. We could have children of our own, Joe. Sorry, Gordon. Oh, I'll have to uh, Hello, Dr. Wetherill. Right, yes, thank you. I'll be there to meet her. Thanks. Sorry, Gordon, I'll have to go. Uh... Mrs. Howard's on her way in. The rhesus patient? Yes, yeah. Last baby was rhesus positive, so um, this one could be a bit of a problem. Mr. Howard, come and sit in here. Come on. She'll be fine. She'll be fine, Mr. Howard. She's in good hands. Oh dear, oh dear. How the mighty have fallen. Listen, I don't, I don't want any trouble. You better learn to do what you're told then. Let me please. I'm not messing about, you know. You cross me, you get more than a little bump on the head. Fond of your kneecaps, are you? Have you ever felt your efforts weren't appreciated, Mr. Harper? I have detected a certain lack of respect for authority here. Ah, very perceptive, Miss Parker. Mm. I'm afraid to say you may be right. And I don't understand it. I have the hospital's best interest at heart. Can't they see that? Ignorance, perhaps. Fear of change. You and I, Miss Parker, we're visionaries. We lead, others follow. They don't always realise it's for their own good. 
curse of management. It's a cross we have to bear, Mr Harper. Quiet. Do call me Nigel, if you'd care to. And you must call me Thelma. Outside hospital grounds, of course. Of course. Oh, hey, so your Uncle Cyril will come over the goods, then? Yep, there you are. Oh, nice one. <laughs> right. What's up? Can you reach the top shelf? I'm having a night on the town with Samantha. I thought I'd better break them in. Oh, you be careful you don't break something else. I mean it, Neville. I've made her a very generous offer. Take it. Unless you want to be in here permanently. Sorry to disturb you. Don't worry, I was just going. Remember, you don't want to spend too long in this place. Friend of yours? Mm -hmm. Anyway, get your gown on. Dinner's ready. How is she? Is the baby here? Uh, not yet, no. Soon, though. Your wife's doing a grand job. Good. Good. It's agony, all this. No, you need to try and conserve your energy. You're going to need it when the baby's born. Why? Is there a problem? There is, I'm afraid, yes. Um, your wife's blood group is rhesus negative. Now, your first child's blood group was rhesus positive. So? Well, that means that Mrs. Howarth has produced some antibodies which may be harmful to this baby. I had no idea. Is it serious? It is, I'm afraid, yes. Why didn't someone tell me? You? My wife? I should have been told. I'm sorry. Sorry isn't good enough, Doctor. You should have seen the way Martin was fooling around with those other girls in the water. Caroline had to just sit and watch. He flirted with me too. No wonder she was angry with him. Yeah. I'm sure there's something he's not telling us. Maybe he pushed her. I would explain why she's blanking it out. This is great. Just what I need to get my strength back. I owe you one. Listen, you win that fight tomorrow night if you get out of here. And that's all the thanks we want. Isn't that wrong, is the Neville? Only I didn't much like the look of that last visitor you had. That was his wife. Not her, you Eunice. The bloke. Henry Carson. He's a gambling man, but he likes to know he's going to win. The fight? Yeah, he gets longer odds than the other fella. He's offered me money to go down. <laughs> More money than I'm getting prize money if I'm going to win. I refuse. This was meant to make me change my mind. And has it? I could do with the money. He's jaundiced and a little weak. The blood problem. I'm afraid so. There's no easy way of saying this. Um, the antibodies are attacking your baby's blood. Get to the point, Doctor. Your son's brain is being poisoned. Nerve cells are dying, which could result in permanent damage, both mental and physical. He is going to need a full exchange blood transfusion. Thank 
That's why you didn't tell me. We will need to do it immediately. No. What? I said no. Mr. Howarth. Mr. Howarth, I'm sorry. I don't think you fully understand. I understand very well. We both do. There won't be any blood transfusion. Not for my son. Well, yes, that looks fine. You're going home this morning. Oh, thank you, Doctor. Thank you. But you're not to fight for at least a month. Do you hear me? Yes, Doctor. And if you take my advice, you'd stop fighting altogether. You've got to start looking after yourself. How do you get on? Clean bill of health. I can get out of here. Oh, brilliant. So, uh, the fight tonight, have you decided what you're going to do yet? Oh, I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. Well, you were off early this morning. I was uh, hoping to finish that conversation we started yesterday. Yeah. I, uh, I think it's important. I, uh, I delivered the Howard's baby last night. The Reese's baby? Well, how is the child? Not good. And they're refusing to allow blood transfusion. Well, why? You have explained the dangers of delay. They're Jehovah's Witnesses. Ah. And the taking of blood is against their beliefs. Well, good luck. Thank you. She's confiscated most of my makeup. Aye. Well, she probably needed it to glam herself up for Harper. Oh. Mr. Hock, please. Well, sorry, sister, but she's got a clause into him. The last thing we need is for him to be making her permanent. She's only here until Matron's finished her reports. Do you think you should have a word with Matron, sister? She's just got a different approach, that's all. I'm sure things will settle down. I prayed and prayed this wouldn't happen. God has his reasons. We have to accept that. But he's so small, helpless. There is something we can do. God gave us the technology to help your son. You're not going to change our minds. We can't taint Luke. I beg your pardon? Luke's blood is his soul. That's not to be tampered with. My husband. We believe the characteristics of the donor would be transferred to our son. It, it's like he'd be a different person. It could come from anyone. A criminal? A murderer? People who give blood are people who want to help. They're good people. Look, act now and you could save Luke from any further damage. We destroy him. Luke is one of the chosen. Would you deny him the chance to inherit paradise on earth? If you transfer the blood of another into our son, he'll be an outcast from our faith. No, I won't allow that. At least our way has a chance. He might come through this unscathed. That's not true. If you, if you do nothing, Luke will certainly suffer. He may even die. Luke's fate is out of our hands. There's nothing we or you can do about it. There is something that I can do if you will let me. <sighs> the parents won't budge, even if it means their child dies. You'll we'll have to get in touch with the social services. I mean, what else can you do? Well, if we go ahead with the transfusion, we can save his life. The child's health has to be our number one priority. It'll take a couple of hours to get a childcare order. Would you like me to get onto that for you? Yes, please. And I'll let the parents know the legal wheels are in motion. Right, well, may as well keep on at them. Do you want me to speak to Mr. Howarth? 
Well, there's no harm in trying, is there? Okay. What are you getting down there, old? Carolyn's a friend. I want to know the truth. The truth about what? I don't believe she slipped. I saw you arguing with her just before the accident. You think I hit her? Did you? See you later, Miss Parker. Full steam ahead. Aye, aye, Mr Harper. We'll have this place ship between the two of us, eh? Clever man. Full of bright ideas for this place. He knows a good thing when he sees one. Yes, we all appreciate his input. I'm terribly sorry to trouble you, Matron. Could I have a word? That's all right, sister. I could do with a break. Sit down. I won't keep you. Thank you. It's about the new assistant matron. She's proving a bit problematic. In what way? She's rather fastidious. Rather too fastidious. She's rubbing a few people up the wrong way. Oh. And I get the distinct impression that Mr. Harper is very keen to have her stay on. There appears to be a frisson developing between the two of them. Oh, a lovely garden. So it is. I never noticed before. I'm not a bad man, Dr. Ormond. I don't want my son to suffer. Then let us do the transfusion. It will go ahead anyway, once the child care order comes through. Mr. Howarth, please. Every second counts. I have to follow my faith. You may not agree with it, but you should respect my decision. I just want you to have a son who's as healthy and as fit as possible. I am doing the best for my son. Don't you see? His life is short. There's an eternity to come, Dr. Ormrod. And the flesh is gone. You're trying to save his body. I'm fighting to save his soul. himself. I wanted him to be with me. We were arguing on the rocks. He said he didn't want a seat. That's when he told me. It's all over. Hey, why would he say that? I thought it was because he wanted someone else, but he doesn't. He just doesn't love me enough to marry me. <laughs> That's when I jumped. I fell and I hit my head. If I go in a straight line, it's just turning corners is a bit tricky. Lizzie, uh, this might sound like a daft question. Why don't you wear a different pair of shoes tonight? Mm, I'll take that as a no, then, women. I, I never, what are you doing back here? That's for all your help. And here's a tip for you. Put your money on me in the fourth round. I'm going to put him down. You watch. 
You do all right for yourselves. I like the sound of that. Hey, thanks a lot. Right, I'll see you there then. Wasn't that brick house, Harris? Didn't know you were a fan of the noble art, Mr. Rose. More than a fan, Case. Did a bit in the army, you know. Wasn't called roundhouse rooms for nothing. Harris is in the ring tonight. We know. Excellent. What, are you going? I wouldn't miss it for the world. Mrs. Howarth, Luke's condition is worsening all the time. Please, just let me help him. We so wanted a little brother for it. You mustn't do this. You mustn't weaken. <laughs> Mr. Howarth, <laughs> Dr. Weather and the childcare order. Right, Mrs. Howarth, I'm afraid I'm going to have to take the pill. No, I won't allow it. <laughs> no. I won't. No. Mr. Howarth, wait! Mr. Howarth! No! Come back here! Someone stop him! No. Let me go. No. I have to get away from here. Come on. Hand over the baby. Don't do anything silly. No. Please. You leave us. You have Goodbye, to know. Look. find a girl, settle down. If you want, you can marry. Look at me. I am old, but I'm happy. I was once like you are now, and I know that it's not easy to be calm when you found something going on. Take your time, think a lot. Do you think it's too late for it? It depends how much damage has been caused by the delay. Twenty mils out. Mm. All right. Mm. Must have been standing in the same position for too long. Well, it's going to be another couple of hours at least. That's okay. This little fellow's worth it. It's so sad. It is when it was so preventable. Sorry about the delay. I knew as soon as you'd called it off. He's seeing someone else, I thought. I'm not. I wasn't, I swear to you. I'm sick of everyone thinking the worst of me. I know that now. But that's why I jumped into the sea. I guess I hoped you'd dive in after me. Realise how much you wanted me. Stupid, wasn't it? You always were a drama queen. It's funny. I hit my head and everything went back to normal between me and you. But now I've remembered. I'm so sorry, Caroline. I know. Me too. Martin. I owe you an apology. Got things all wrong. I really am sorry. How is he? Is it done? It's all finished. Yes. When will we know Luke's condition? 
Um, well, we won't know for sure for a few weeks, but, uh, I'm afraid you really must prepare yourself for the possibility of Luke having some brain damage. Who gave you the right to play God with other people's children? Now our son's doomed in this life and damned in the hereafter. I don't know how you can live with yourself. I'm a doctor. I did my duty. My conscience is clear. You can see Luke when you're ready, OK? Job. They said I wasn't reliable. I've got, I've got a family to feed. I'm sorry about your bet, but I'm going to need all the money I can get, even if it is Emery's money. There's a very respectable fish restaurant by the Lido. I wonder, uh, would you care to join me? Work or pleasure, Mr. Harper? Just so as I know. Um, both. Well, then, I would be delighted to accompany you. Can I see you in my office, Miss Parker? Oh, I'm just about to go off duty, actually. Now, please. I'm waiting for you there. Now, chaps. Seconds out. Checking on your history, Miss Parker. Something Mr. Harper should have done with the agency before they sent you here. Disciplined six 
times. Sacked on four occasions. You haven't held a position in five years. No, I haven't. Then why on earth do you think you should be working here? I have a lot to offer. I have. You look. There's a wealth of good ideas in there. Restrict patients' food. They dribble and hide it under the bed. Which would maintain discipline and, at the same time, save costs. Doctors are like children. Humour them. Well, you have to. It's the only way. postpone it. I'm not really in the mood. Oh, that's a shame. I'm not feeling all that good, to be honest. Bit of a tummy ache. Oh, dear. I wonder what's brought that on. Oh, my money's on assistant Matra Parker. Felt queasy since she arrived. Well, never mind. Another time. You go and put your feet up. Mine are going in a bucket of water. Are you, um, you all right? You're still suffering? I'm afraid so. I hope it isn't appendicitis. Would you like me to take a look for you? I suppose I should. Thanks. Yes, well, it's not as bad as I thought, but it is very serious. You have a detached retina. Now, that's something we can treat. However, you'll never box again. Well, that's not a problem, Doctor. I'm never going to box again. I've got a wife and kids to think about now. She was sectioned five years ago. A complete mental breakdown, apparently. She absconded from St. Margaret's last Monday. I'm very sorry. I've been a fool, Machen. I should have known. A woman would have to be crazy to fall for me. What do you reckon it is? I think you ought to prepare yourself. Sit down. What? I can't be that serious. Doctor? 
Dr. Samantha, you're pregnant. Pregnant? <laughs> there must be some mistake. No, there's no mistake. It's definite. We've had a complaint. About what? You. She said you had relations of a sexual nature. I don't want this baby, Meryl. Certainly can't fault your eyesight. 2020 vision, I've got. Oh. She passed out about 20 minutes ago. Severe blood loss. Yes, nice moment. 